we look at one of our most well-known portions in the Bible, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 onwards. We all know this portion. And he said, he is Jesus of course, okay? And he said, a man had two sons. How many? Two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. And there he squandered his estate with loose living. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country. And he began to be impoverished. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pots that the swine were eating and no one was giving anything to him. But when he came to his senses, he said, Let's stop there and go back to that portion again. Verse 11. 15.11 There was a man and this man had two sons. And the younger said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. They are all young people. The first Sunday of this year. First Sunday of this year. All young people. Some little older like Vijay. I am young. Okay, he's older. But the rest of you all are young. You look very young. Without my glasses, I can see your face properly. So you look very young. And there's something when you're very young, especially when you are in your teens and you're growing a little older. Teens and older. There's something which you yearn like this young boy. You know what you yearn for? You yearn for freedom. That's a yearning in your heart. I want to be free. Sometimes there is no reason to why you want freedom. If you technically look at it later, further, if you study it, there is absolutely nothing wrong in the father's house. Later he himself will testify, my father's house was good. My father's rules were good. There is something when we are all growing up, I know. I, mean, I was not that younger son, though I was a younger son, because I never knew the Lord. But I am talking about, about these kids who are sitting here who... You know the Lord by now. You have heard the word enough. You know the Lord by now. So you are in the Father's house. Even today, right here, you are in the Father's house. I was never in my Father's house until my early 20s. Okay, So I was never in the Father's house. But you are there in your Father's house. And this father had two sons. The younger one said, I want my freedom. But please understand this. He is not a covetous, greedy boy. He is not longing for something which somebody else has. He says, give me, give me my share of the estate. What did he say? Give me my share of the, give me my share of the estate. Did you see this? He did not ask for anything other than what he thought was rightfully his. And often in our homes, in our offices, in our church, in our schools, in our colleges, wherever you want that freedom. You are not asking for anything that belongs to somebody else. I just want to be myself. Why don't you let me be myself? Because we always think the rules are for somebody else. Why are you trying to make me like that one? Are you getting it? When God gave the Ten Commandments, He gave it to everybody. Basically to Israel. He called his children and said, You are in your father's house now, in your father's presence. This is the rules for you. He didn't give it to the others. Please understand, the father's rules are in the father's house. It's not for the others. For others, for the, lo the laws to be applicable, you need to be a child of the father. Okay? If you have a child, or if you have a dog. No, I'm not comparing both, okay? There are many dog lovers here. Imagine I go and buy a dog. 
go and buy a dog. A puppy. I get a puppy home. Once I get the puppy home, what do we start doing? Those who have got puppies know we start training the puppy. We train, there's somebody smiling over here, he's a puppy lover here, okay? Train many puppies. Shakina. Okay? You train the puppy. Have you know why you train the puppy? You train the puppy because the puppy is yours. Do you mean you go around training every puppy on the road? You do not train all the puppies on the road. You train the puppy which is yours. You paid a price, bought it and brought it home. And because that puppy is yours, you want to train that puppy. Why? Because the puppy needs to be trained. Because you are living in a home and there are rules in that home. And if the puppy doesn't live by those rules, the puppy is going to mess up the home. And when the one puppy messes up the home, it is going to affect everybody. If we ask my daughter, she will tell you she's got a lovely cat called Babyly. But once in a while, Babyly has a habit of getting on the bed and wetting the bed. And then Babyly messes up everybody's life. You're getting it? When one puppy is not trained or refuses to go under the training and messes up, the entire house gets affected. But only puppies which are bought for a price and brought into the house is trained. The others are not trained. Please understand this. Therefore, as young people full of zeal to share the gospel, do not go share the law outside. Do not share the law outside because they don't understand the law because they are not in the Father's house. Tell them there is a Savior who came. He loves you. He died for you because you are on the way to perdition. If you look upon Jesus and repent, you will be saved. Once they are saved, bring them to the house and then in the house the law will be taught how to remain in the Father's house and how there is protection and provision and security, everything in the Father's house. Because the rules are only for the father's children. When you training is a difficult process. Okay, so the puppy has to be turned, the puppy has to be whacked with a newspaper, and when it doesn't work with a smaller stick. And many times it will mess up, but after some time it realizes, hey, I better do this and things will work for me. And after some time the puppy knows. Some puppies don't learn. So finally you give up and say, Okay, let's send the puppy away to the kennel. But most puppies, if you train them consistently, they learn. And they learn it very fast. And here is a puppy who was trained. He was in his father's house. He grew up there for many, 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 many years in the father's house. Outwardly, he was keeping the rules of the father's house. But inwardly, he was waiting, waiting, waiting for a day when he could just go. When he could just go. He just wanted to go. So a day came, he came to his father. I don't know how old he was. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. These are all arbitrary ages put by different governments. But you don't know what age he came. But he came to his father and said, Father, I want my freedom. I'm not asking for your freedom. I'm not asking for my elder brother's freedom. I'm asking for my freedom and my rights. How it affects you is not my concern. I am only asking for what is rightfully mine. Please. I want that. I am not asking for anything else. I am only asking for what is rightfully mine. So he comes and tells the father, give me. The father, after a point, our heavenly father will give us. Not happily, not willingly. But reluctantly. Why? Because he is the one who said, I give you the free will to choose. One day we all have to choose. Everybody sitting here has to choose one day. And every day we are making choices based on the choice we made. So he will finally allow you. Go. I love you. My heart is broken. But I made a rule that I made you free. I told you not to do that. But I will not stop you. So he put a tree in the garden. Think about this as a tree. He put a tree in the garden. And he told my son, my daughter, if you eat of this, you will die. 
Then he put electric fencing around it. Is it written? He put barbed wire around it. Is it written? He didn't put anything. But he said, so that you don't eat from it, I will do something. I will do something so that you will not eat from it. You know what? So that you will not long for it and eat from it, though I have given you a rule, I will do it. Every day I will walk with you. So that you will desire me more than that. You will desire me, my company, my presence, my love, my rules, me more than that. Because I have kept only one thing away from you. The only thing that will stop you from going there and plucking it is me. If you enjoy my presence. And that's exactly what God offers in the the new covenant. He says, I'll be your God. You will be my children. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. If you love me, you will keep my command. My commandments. What do I offer you in return? My presence. You can choose my presence. Or that freedom which you think is great. Which you don't understand is that when you walk with me is when you are really free. That freedom is elusive. It's not real. And then what does he do? Scripture says, step two is very good. He's an honest boy because he understood some principles in the father's house. When he come down to verse 13, it says, not long after that, the younger son got together all he had. He's a good boy. Many of us, when we are young, we have taken money from our father's pockets. I have. We all did, right? We all honest, right? We did. We all did. We all did. I knew where my mother used to hide the coins. You go to the kitchen and look in the tins in which, no, mustard seed and all. I knew it was where she hid. She never knew. I knew better. When she forgot also, I knew where it was. We all took those things. This boy didn't. He's learned some principles. He took only what he had. On the way leaving from the house, he didn't steal his father's anything or his brother's anything. He only took what he had. Okay, understand. He's not asking for anything or taking anything which he feels is right, rightfully here. His. So, look deep inside. He looks like a very nice boy. But there is a problem. Why did you leave your father's house? The question is, why did you leave his father's house? Why do we leave the father's house? And when we leave our father's house, where are we direct headed to? Scripture says, a distant country. When we leave our father's house, we are headed to a distant country. A country where further and further you go, there is no presence of the father. There is no recognition of the father there. And he started on a journey. I don't know how many of you have started on that journey sitting here. Because you could be right here sitting in church, but your heart could be in a faraway country. And every step is taking him further away from the father's house, and closer to the distant country. Every step. That's why we say there is no stationary position in the spiritual realm. Either you are there closer and closer and closer in the father's house, into the father's heart, or going further, maybe slowly, different. Speed may be different. Some may be running, some may be walking fast, some may be slowly going, but going further away from the father's house or getting closer. You need to understand this is important. Very, very important. You have to keep moving. You cannot stay stationary. Abraham, when we studied Ramba, he kept on moving, 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 moving. He's moving. Though he's in the promised land, he's still moving. Moving and having new, new encounters with God. He had a son called Isaac. He was in the promised land, in the father's house. He didn't move much. Where did he move? He just moved in circles. Did he move? If you read Isaac's life, did he move? Like Abraham moved. He did not move. Like Abraham moved. He just moved in circles. But there is a problem. When you don't move with God in your generation, 
somebody else might come after you. His name is Jacob. You know what Jacob did? He went back the road God had told Abraham not to take. And who told him to go that way? Isaac told him to go that way. Go back to Haran. What did Abraham tell Eliezer? Isaac will not go back to Haran. Why did Isaac tell Jacob, you can go to Haran? Because he did not move with God. So it's important that you move with God because there may be others behind you whom you do not realize who is watching your lives and because you are not moving, they will go back the road they were not supposed to take. Because you did not move. Because everybody looks up at somebody else. Everybody is a model for somebody. Whether you know it or not, in your office, in your home, in your workplace, in your college, in your school, everywhere, somebody is looking up at you or looking down at you. One of the two is happening. And this is what happens over here. There he is. And he's gone to a distant country. He's going further and further and further and further. Why is he leaving? If you actually ask him, what is that you disliked in your father's house? He doesn't have an answer. The only thing actually is, deep inside, he saw rules as restricting his freedom. He did not see rules are the ones which protects you and actually gives you the joy and the peace to enjoy your freedom. Often when we see the rules of God or the rules in your own homes, we see them as restrictive. We do not see them as liberating. That rules were given to liberate us. How many men, you're all teenagers, but how many children do you know who are happy because they disobeyed their parents? Have you ever heard any man or woman coming up in their old age and said, I'm so happy, thrilled in my life because I never listened to my father and mother. Nobody can give that testimony and it will be false if they give. Because God said, obey your father and mother and you will be blessed. For a season when you are running away from them and disobeying them, you will feel it is good. But at the end of it, God knows. No man who has not loved his wife has been happy. As God told, husbands love your wife. No woman who has not listened to her husband has ever been happy. Because God said, listen to your husbands. But when you saw the rules, you felt, I don't like these rules in my father's house. Okay? I want to go away to a far away country. Where I have heard in that country there is freedom. What did he do? He went to that country and... What did he squander? In? What did he squander? His? Where did he bring that wealth from? It's the wealth the Father gave you. Your anointing, your talents, your gifts, all the things which the Father gave you, you took it into the world and ran it away. In wild living. Your anointing was never supposed to be used there for this purpose. Your blessings was never meant to be used for that purpose. Because it was from the father's house. It was never meant for that. It was never, never meant for that. The anointing was meant for another purpose altogether. You never realized when you went from the father's house to the distant country, why people liked you. Initially, they all liked you. They liked your company. They wanted to be with you. Because they saw you were different because you had a wealth you brought from your father's house. You had a wealth which you brought from your father's house, which is not seen there in the world. They don't know what it is, but they know there is something different about you. And you thought they liked you because they liked your looks, liked your clothes, and liked all the things which you had. You never realized they liked your company because you brought a wealth from the father's house. Then you started losing it. Little by little, little by little, little by little, you started losing it. It's going. It's going, and it's going, and it's going. Scripture says, after he had spent everything, one day it's over. One day it's it's over, it's finished. 
One day when it is finished, you realize you are just like anybody in the faraway country. There is no difference between you and them. And one day Samson woke up and realized he was just like a Philistine. Because the wealth the father had given Samson is gone. I'm just like a Philistine. And when you are just like a Philistine, who wants Samson? He's good only for one thing. Tie him up and put him around the millstone. That's all you're good for. This world, this faraway country called Philistine or Egypt, isn't bothered about anybody who has come from the father's house and his wealth is finished. You're good for nothing. Immediately they realize you are not one of us anyway and you have nothing in you so that we could come to you. Your wealth is gone. And each one of you sitting here do not realize this is exactly the enemy's plan. He knows whose son and whose daughter you are. He knows you have been marked out by the blood of Jesus. Even if you do not see, He sees the blood upon you. He sees the blood upon you. He knows you are children of the living God. He knows you have been marked out for an eternal future and glory. Therefore, He will push you, push you, push you, push you to seek that freedom which is actually bondage. Seek that freedom that is actually bondage. When you are seeking that freedom and the initial days or weeks or months of years, that freedom looks great. You know why? Because you got a lot of wealth. And you got a lot of company. And everybody says, wow, you are great. Vijay, how able you are great. We like you. But if you keep, be among them, that's why Jesus said, you are in this world but not of it. If you go to that faraway country and become part of it, one day your wealth will start going. Your testimony is gone. Your word has no more power. Your prayers have no more power. You have nothing to give them. Little by little, little. So we go to that faraway country as ambassadors and come back. We don't live there. We do not stay there. We got nothing to do with them. We understand our reason. We understand the purpose. We go there. But we always go back to the father's house. And then, one day you wake up and you realize you have what he, you have? Nothing. And then there is a severe famine in that whole country. In the world in which you sold yourself, suddenly there is a famine. You have a famine in your spirit. We are not talking about physical. This is a physical famine, a famine in your spirit, which that world in which you have gone can never meet. Because they do not have anything of the father's house there. The famine in your heart can be met only by the father, but there is no presence of the father, nor the wealth of the father in that faraway country. Then you realize, here I am, stuck. Who will speak to me? Nobody has anything to tell you, which sounds familiar from the father's house. They will give you a lot of advice. They will tell you lots of things. They will tell you it's okay. Everybody is doing it. doesn't matter. But deep inside you know there is famine. And scripture says, he began to be in need. Thank God he began to be in need. Some people even don't even recognize the need, they forget. And then you come to the next verse, scripture says, so he went and? What did he do? He went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country. What did he do? Hired himself. He sold himself. He hired and says, look, I am willing to work for daily wages. You, ch you tell me what the wages is. Anything is fine for me. And what did he send him to? He sent him to the... Send him to the... Now turn to verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the... The father also had a field. If to work in a field... What's your desire? Why didn't you work in the father's field? If that is what you wanted, if that was the reason of going to the faraway country to work in a field, why didn't you work in the father's field? Why did you sell yourself to that citizen of that faraway country? If that was what you were looking for, if that was what was looking for, why did you sell yourself? Are you getting it? In the citizen's country, in the citizen's field, there is everything that is there in the father's house also. The only thing its nature is different. There is worship. But it's a worship of the self, not the worship of the living God. There is music. 
But it is not this music you will hear. It's a different kind of a music. There is dressing. Not the dressing you are dressed in. It will be a different kind of a dressing. There is language. Not the language you speak in the house of God. A different language which you wouldn't dare to speak in the house of God. There is everything. But in nature they are different. And the reason you left the father's house is because you longed for that. Without realizing it comes at a heavy, heavy price. Very heavy price. You never realize it comes at a heavy price. When you are sitting in the comfort of your father's house and protected and taken care of and these rules are set, you thought, oh, I am the miserable one, I am the miserable one. All my friends are enjoying outside there. God says, you don't know the end. You don't know the end. I love you. If you keep on asking, keep on asking, I will let you go. The rules which your parents have given you, you don't like. Your parents will tell you, wake up in the morning. You don't like it. Work hard. Exercise. You don't like it. But you don't realize these are the same rules will bring a harvest later when you are old. When you are old. You look back and today see people in the ministry who can work for days without an end. You will see all of them were trained by their parents when they were young in things that really disciplined them. Taught them to work hard. You need to work hard if you need to prosper. So they worked hard and today God has called them to serve in His field and they still work hard. Why? Because they were disciplined and they didn't fight against the rules of their house from where they came. Please, sit, children sitting here, do not ever think that if you don't work hard, you will prosper. Because God said you need to work hard. He said if you don't work hard, you shouldn't eat. You need to work hard because it's a discipline. Not that your provision will come from your work necessarily, no. But God says it's a disciplining of your physical body. Because a day will come when the Father will say, I've got a use for you, which needs a lot of discipline. Telling you today's young people will perish because of lack of discipline. Not because of lack of anointing or knowledge. Because you are not disciplining your body now. And the enemy has actually put in a nice little fruit which is called Outsource jobs from US, where you work at night and sleep during the day, which God never said you should do. Your body is getting messed up, messed up, and messed up, and messed up, which is true. You ask anyone who works at night and sleeps during the day, do it. You're always tired. Am I right? You're always tired. That's not what God. So pray, ask God, Lord, I want to serve you. If I need to change, I will change. Show me, and He will show you. Because what you are doing will cost you in the long run. Unless, of course, God does a miracle and moves you to a land where your timings finally work. Remember, there are two fields. And he hired himself. What is the solution of the citizen of the faraway country? It's very, it's very interesting. It says, he sent him into his fields to feed them. And... This boy hasn't changed yet. Remember, he hasn't changed yet. He says, he longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating. God in his word very clearly classifies. That is food which his children eat. That is food which pigs eat. Even now in his misery, he is still longing to eat the food which pigs eat. That's why God calls for separation. The world eats the food that is for pigs. That's why God says you can bring a pig home, give him a nice shampoo bath, put a ribbon and dress, it will go back to that mud. You can get a dog and do all that will go back to its vomit because it's used to eating another food. And now in the faraway country, he has lost every knowledge of his father's house and is looking at that food and he wants that. Because there is a spiritual famine that has hit him. Spiritually empty. God is asking young people, teenagers sitting here, do you long for that food? It comes by many names. By many, many names. Do you long for that food? Do you really long for that food? The enemy will say there is freedom in it. God said there is slavery in it. At the end of the day, you will be a slave hired out to a citizen of a faraway country. When the servants in the father's house have more than enough to eat. 
Are you getting it? There's a lot of young people. I want this message up tonight. A lot of young people who listen. A lot of young people who listen outside of India are ones who took this road. Many of them took this road. God in His mercy. Sadly. Many of them died the last one week. God in His mercy. He got them back. He took them home. Please remember, today is only eight. Eight days we have buried 24 children in New York in our home. 24 children have died. God was merciful to them. They all began from homes. They all ran away. Some of them were, most of them were innocent in the way their parents were responsible for their mess. But they did not trace their feet wherever they were to these churches which were there. There were churches everywhere. You could have gone there. I don't think most churches would have thrown them out. But they chose not to go there but go everywhere else. Even sitting here as young people, you would prefer probably at some point to long to be there for another youth service where the message will be different and you can come dressed whatever in way you like. Nobody will say anything. They will say to school. If you come drunk or if you come high on drugs, nothing matters in those places. As long as you come, we are happy. And you will think there is freedom there. God, there is bondage there. It may have a cross on top, but he says it's a far away country still. We need to ask ourselves, what are we actually looking for? In which way are we directed? Where are we traveling? Where will we end at the end of this year? Where will my steps take me at the end of this year? Bring me close to the Father, or further and further and further and further away. You know, at the end of the story, the boy comes back. Does he come back? And the father... And the elder brother has an encounter. We leave the elder brother out. But there's something which the father says. The father says, See, our son was dead and now he's alive. Are you getting it? He says, If you're not dead, if you're dead in your father's house, that means you're alive in the faraway country. If you are dead in the faraway country, you are alive in the Father's house. You cannot be both places at the same time. You cannot be alive Sunday to Sunday. Or if you are a teenager, every second Saturday, every month, you cannot be. Either you are alive in your Father's house and dead to that faraway country, or you are alive in the faraway country and sitting here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, you are dead. And if you are dead, it's time, 2011, it's time you realized you are dead and start walking back to the Father's house. And doesn't matter how many hours of word you have heard, what all commitments you have made, if you are dead, you are dead. And it's time we came back to our senses and said, Lord, I want to go back to my Father's house. I don't want to sell myself to the citizen of the faraway country. Because in the citizen of the faraway country, he will give you all stuff that is meant for the pigs. Men for the pigs. That is why when Israel was taken into the desert and the law is given, if you read Leviticus, there's a whole lot of laws over there which we don't follow today. We don't have to follow today. But it was basically to tell them there's a difference between you and the rest of the world. There is what is called separation. That separation will tell the world that you belong to me and you are in the Father's house. How will the world know you are the, you are the Father's children? The only way the world will know that you are the father's children is because you are separated. Not because you are saved. Because even I don't know whether you are saved. But I will know whether you are separated. So everything that you do, you say, you dress, you speak, you work, everything will show whether you are separated or not. Separation touches every area of your life. How you deal with your parents, how you deal with your brothers, how you deal with your sisters. Sisters, how you deal with your bosses in your company, how you deal with your teachers, your principals, your conversation, everything will touch. Separation will touch everything. Salvation, I wouldn't know. Separation is easy to make out. 2011, God is asking us, are you separated? Do you want to be separated or not? Or you, being there in church, sitting there in church, is actually traveling to a faraway country. Asking all boys and girls, will you look like this on Monday? Will you look exactly like this on Monday? 
I'm not saying they should cover your head in your office. You don't have to. Submission is only to, to your husband. And all of us to authorities that have been placed above. We need to check our heart. If you were to be told, do this, what's inside? What's our attitude? In your college, if your lecturer says, sit down. Do you sit down, but in your heart you are still standing up? You are in a faraway country. Because the boy did everything the father said until one day he realized, I am old enough. I am smarter than you. I need to go. Give me what is mine. Give me my freedom. And for you, that may be the day when you are passing out. You got your certificate in your hand. Bye. I don't have to listen to you anymore. Lots of people do it. They throw their books, they burn their books, and they think it's cool. It is not cool. It's a sign against heaven who instituted authority. He instituted all that. Ask yourself, how did you celebrate when you, when you crossed each of these milestones which represented for you freedom? And liberty. I know many of you are smiling, so you know what you did. The scripture says, true freedom will come where the Spirit is Lord. Where the Spirit is Lord, there is liberty. Are you getting it? Are we getting it? Because if you are not found working in one field, that is the Father's field, then you will be found working in another field. And in that field, you will be serving pigs. I am not talking about your manager. <laughs> because actually he is serving pigs. What is he doing there? He is taking care of pigs. He is surrounded by pigs. And he is longing for the food of these pigs. But nobody gave him. You know what? This will be true about you if you don't go back to the father's house or you are not live there in the father's house. A day will come when you will realize nothing of this big world will satisfy you because deep inside there is a remembrance of your father's house. You thought this relationship is going to make me happy. And after some time you realize the relationship is not going to make me happy at all. I am dry in this relationship. It's dead. You thought this this dress, if I, if I change like this, all my friends will accept me. You realize, you just became like one of them. They did not accept you. You thought, if I change according to my friends, this music, this dress, this thing, this thing, this thing, then I will be acceptable. And you realize after some time, it doesn't bring any satisfaction at all. It's dead. It's empty. You know why? Because you went from the father's house. Father had deposited something in your spirit. The day will come when scripture says he came to his senses. He came to his senses. Please don't think everybody will come to their senses. God's grace and mercy if we come to our senses. Some people like the faraway country. And they don't want to come to their senses. They have rebelled. And they enjoy their rebellion. And they live in their rebellion. Some of them die in their rebellion. All do not. Samson came. At the end he said, Lord, please, once more, please. I tasted that anointing. I am blind now. I am serving these pigs here. But the taste of that anointing in my lips still. Once, just once I ask you, Father, give me that anointing back. And God said, yes. You know what, Samson? When the sign of separation I see in you, you will receive that anointing again. What was the sign of separation for Samson? Is yeah. Just let your hair grow back again. I need to see that separation. Don't tell the Philistine, please come, my hair is growing, shave it again. Let that sign of separation come upon you. For him that was that. Solomon took all the roads, all the roads. At the end of it he found it was all dead, dead, dead. There was nothing, absolutely nothing in it. So finally he comes to the end and says, Young men, old men, young women, old women, I have only one thing to tell you. After searching all these avenues, as the wisest man and the most foolish who ever lived, only there is one good thing you can do. Fear God 
and listen to what he says. That's the end of the whole story. Doesn't he say that? The end he says. That's the only thing. And these are things which we decide now. Now we decide. Lord, I don't want to take any other road. I don't want to take any other road. Because, because I don't want to live in this. Because this pig is not the piglet you find in Winnie the Pooh. It's a different pig altogether. The pigs have their own dressing code. They have their own music. They have their own movies. They have their own books. They have their own jokes. They have their own culture. And we long for that because we see things that if I crack a few of those jokes, I will also be accepted and I will also be cool. If you go dress like this into that crowd, nobody looks at it. They say, Kahan se aagaya? Kaun se zamane se aagaya tu? If you are a boy and you don't... Now, just I went to pick glasses for the drinks and all the young boys are standing there one after another lighting their cigarettes. If ten of your friends in the piggy world smokes and you are the only one who doesn't smoke and you continue to live among them, how long will it take before you start smoking? How long? How long will you withstand? You can't. After some time you will give it. Piggy world is not going to change. That's why you have to go there and come out. You have to be separated. I have been separated. 2011, God is saying, you need to be separated. Promise given to us is that, I will bless you, I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. But when? When you leave away that faraway country and go to the land that I am showing, then you will be blessed. Please don't take that blessing that is promised without obeying the commandment that is added with that. Since if you separate, you will be blessed. If you don't separate, the blessing will always remain. But you will never experience it. You will never experience it. That's young people sitting over there. Doesn't matter how old you are. 10, 11, 12. Doesn't matter. Even you. 10. Rosh. Okay. home children are much more organized because they have strict rules. Children who come from home struggle more than the children who come from home. I've noticed it. The rules are very clear up there on the wall. Tuck, 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 tuck. These are the rules you have to keep. If you don't keep, Sister Mary and Principal Shakina will be after you. But in our homes, young children, be very careful. Be very, very careful. Don't run. Maybe you will think it's nothing cool. I just, I just want that Adidas shoe and that Nike football shoes. And I want that. I want this iPod. My friend has that. I just, you don't realize you're after the piggy world already. Already after that. Because I know what their conversations are when these little ones get together. When they get together, it's all about their gadgets. They have. Honestly think, Monday to Saturday, whenever you are in your schools, colleges, wherever you are, what is your conversation actually about? We'll tell you which country you are in. You want to know which country you are in? Right now, just check Monday to Saturday where you are. What do you talk? What do you discuss with the people around you? Clothes, movies, or wasting time talking nothing, which quite a number of people are capable of talking nothing. They talk long hours to talk nothing. But in God's kingdom, God says, redeem the time for the days are evil. You don't have time for that. You don't have time for that. They need to know that you are different, that you have come from another house, which is called the Father's house. You have to come. It will cost you. It will cost you. I cannot tell you everything. Because certain things cannot be told. But two days back, a young kid called Samuel, picked up from under the bridge in Bronx, brought to our home in DTC. Just three days back. Three days back. Picked up with HIV. Picked up. Brought for a sleepover. Got saved. Got baptized in the Holy Spirit yesterday and this morning, whole morning, on the net, he's prophesying to me. Telling what has happened in my life, everything he said is correct, and what is going to happen in the future if you believe. Just 13 years old. Most of you sitting here is over 13. And most of you sitting here have sat in the father's house for a long time. 
I was stunned. All I could say, yes, 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 yes. And probably for the first time in human history, here is a young boy sitting and prophesying over the internet. He took the computer from Deshaun and is saying, this is what the Lord said, this is what the Lord said, this is what the Lord said. When did he get saved? Day for yesterday. Where were you till then? Under the bridge at Bronx. Please do not forget the Father. The Father is not a respecter of persons. He loves everybody. Everybody he loves. He loves everybody. He loves everybody. If you are willing to go all the way to the Father, the Father will come all the way to you. doesn't matter how young you are. All you need is, God, here I am. I like your rules. I love your rules because I realize in your rules, there is profit for me. There is blessing for me. There is honor for me. There is glory for me one day in your rules. The rules are not my enemies. They are my best friends. Best friends. If you have any doubt about that, get out and drive on the wrong side of the road. Then you will realize rules are your good friends. Are you getting it? Do not live in the faraway country and stay in church. Do not sit in church, but in your heart you are actually living in a faraway country. At the end of the day, God is not looking at what you are doing. He is looking into your heart. And He says, you got rebellion there. You got rebellion there. But Lord, don't you see me? I come and clean the church. He says, I saw, but you are rebellion. You are a rebel, but I clean the church. He said, yeah, you clean the church because you like cleaning the church. Let your pastor tell you something which you don't like. Then I will know whether you are a rebel or not. It is easy to obey when your father or your mother or your principal, your lecturer or sister Mary or somebody tells you what you like. But that's not where your obedience is tested. Your obedience is tested when God speaks through a man or a woman, put in your life something which you don't like. That's the test. That is the test. That's the test when you know. It's, no. it's not whether you like it or not, but whether you do it or not. Have you been in the army? you never been in the army. You're too young to be in the army. But if you have been with the army, worked with the army, you will see all of those. 24-7 they are on duty. I was many years working among them. Driver is sitting there, lying over there. And then, call, report, station headquarters, 15 minutes. But what is he doing? Putting his shoes on. Putting his uniform. Ten minutes later he's reached over there. I've seen it. You know why? Because he knows who is calling him. And he's been knows he's been called to obey. Even believers. One day in a office in a simple mess. We used to have services in the army in the mess. Because there is some place that didn't have a church or anything. So, it's a mess. Benches, this thing put for this, we call OR, other ranks to come and eat. So there are three or four drivers who are believers. So I go over there to conduct an evening service. Fantastic. They will bring their bed sheets like this, put it over the table, sit on the bench. It's become an altar and it's become a service. And they start singing. They start singing, the Spirit of God starts moving, they're crying, they're weeping, everything. Message is almost over, there is a call, they're gone. The table is over, it's shut, put their uniform, put their guns, they're gone. Because they know they've been called to obey. They've signed on the dotted paper, and went through their training. They know you have to obey, and if you obey, it's good for you. It's good for you. The rules are good for you. Everything in the army is given to them because they obey. Let them disobey. And suddenly you see another side of the army. It is called quarter guard. It's called the quarter guard. I have gone to the quarter guard also to visit those who did not obey and ended up there. There they receive ministry. God also has a quarter guard. That's what he says. Whom I choose as my son, I discipline. I rebuke, scourge, will whack you nicely, promises all that. He will let you go. You don't realize this. He uses this faraway country, this faraway
faraway country and the citizens of this faraway country has the agents of his discipline for his children. If you are his child and you go to a faraway country, I will promise you, you will end up in the pig pen. That's God's disciplining for you to come to your senses. He will do it so that you will come to your senses. Those are his agents, agents of discipline. And you need to ask yourself, some of you need to ask yourself, what is that you think? What is that you talk? What is your whole life about? Is it about the father's house or about the faraway country? See, if it's about the father's house, you're secure. The elder son, the father had only one complaint. Your attitude is nice. Your attitude towards your younger brother is not nice. But he tells him something. You know what? Everything that I have is yours. Everything that I have is yours. Why? Because you were in my house. Two, you worked in my field. You did not go to a faraway country. Maybe you don't like your younger brother. That we will deal. We will talk it out. But everything that I have belongs to you. Remain in the father's house this year. Work out ideas in your head. Do not go to the thick pen and listen to what the faraway citizen tells you. Don't hire yourself to that citizen. Because for you, the greatest danger is not a pastor or a parent. It's your peers. People of your own age. People of your own age. They are the greatest danger because they are the ones who bring this pressure and puts this illusion before you. You know what? We live this way and it is cool. They don't tell you the truth. They don't tell you the truth. And the more dangerous ones are those who are believers and yet not believers. They are even more dangerous because they will come and tell you, it is okay. It is okay. God understands. There is no problem with that. You can be here for some days. You can be there some days. So, See, look at us. We are fine. But you didn't see the end of their journey. That's why God has recorded the ends of everybody's journey in this. So that you would know how everybody ended. That many did not end the way they began. Somewhere on the road they went to the faraway country. Went to the faraway country. King Saul ended up before a witch. Didn't he? He strayed? He ended up before a witch. David also strayed? Did he end up before a witch? No, he said, call the priest. I am not hearing anything from God, but there is something inside. I know where I have come from. Something about the father inside. Call the priest. Bring the effort. Let me know what God is saying. Why? Why? Did you call for the effort? Did you call for the priest? Did you go to the pastor? When you had a problem, did you go to the pastor? Did you go to a believing elder brother or a sister? Or did you go to the unbeliever and listen to all their opinion? Ask yourself. Did you go back to your college and talk to all your friends and sought their opinion and their counsel? Then you will know which country you are living. Because they will tell you. Advice that seems very good. But easily, basically it's to look after pigs. It's a piggy loves lifestyle. We need to ask ourselves, because we are moving into a times which are very, very dangerous. The scripture says, in the last days, the love of many shall grow cold. Very, very cold. And if you have to search your hearts, you will know the coldness is coming in. And it's not connected with the temperature drop outside. There's a coldness that's coming in hearts. And people will be rebellious and disobedient. Look all around, all around. You see there is a rebellion in the air at homes, colleges, at schools, at workplaces, everywhere there is rebellion. That's the hallmark of the last days. God is saying, are you part of it? Are you part of it or do you obey? Do you like the Father's house? Have you come to your senses? If you have come to your senses, He says, get up and go back. Get up and go back. First Saturday, first month of this year, if you have strayed away from the Father's house, God is saying this, this Saturday. Go back. Go back. Go back. Because there is safety in the Father's house. There is security in the Father's house. In His Father's house, the servants, those are the angels, whom we are supposed to rule one day, they eat better than us. Haven't you made man a little lower than the angels for a season? Because one day man will rule the angels. Those angels who are servants in the Father's house eat better than us. Sons and the daughters. I came to your senses and realized, gosh, what am I doing here? 
I was called for this. One day God says, His glory shall cover me. I shall live with Him in that city that shall come from above. This is, this is my destiny. This is to what I am called. And I am going to run after where this things. Let me not listen to the lies of what this enemy is saying. Come, come, come. Get out, get out. Take your freedom, take your freedom. Get out, get out, get out. These rules are all bad for you. It's not good for you. You look like a nerd. If you listen to your father and mother, your teachers and your pastor and what God says, you are just a nerd. Get out, get out. There is freedom outside. But see, there is not freedom. There is bondage. End of it is death. This man came to his senses. God is asking, there is anyone here to come to your senses. Anyone who will hear today, will he come to your senses? He says, you can work in my field. I will give you the anointing. I will give you the gift. And you will work in my field. Amen? Shall we pray? Oh, it's late. Father, we come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, bringing these little children before thee. You told one day, be of good cheer, little children. The kingdom of God is yours. And we are seeing a move of the Holy Spirit among young people and children of God. They are seeing dreams and visions and prophesying. These are kids who had nothing, absolutely nothing. And you are moving them, raising up an army, the last army of God. This is truly the last generation, the Joshua army, who will rise up before the end comes. They shall go to the ends of the earth and declare your gospel. Declare there is a king and there is a father. And in his father's house there is everything. Joy, there is peace, there is righteousness, there is protection. I pray for these young children here, that they will know that if they hide your law in their hearts, they will not sin against you. You will give them that covering of your Holy Spirit, that cleansing of the blood of Jesus every day, so that they will walk into that faraway country every week, but come back. I know they do not belong there. They do not live a piggy lifestyle. They have been called to higher and greater things. I pray, Father, today, tonight I pray, each one of these young people this year will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then they will have the power to separate, not just the desire. Pray for Pastor Prabhu Kumar. Father, if you tarry to come tonight, he's not well, he's got an infection, he's got fever. We rebuke that spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. And we pray and we believe you will stand here tomorrow morning, the strength of the Holy Ghost. And he will speak to us what you have put in his heart. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We praise you. We worship you, God. We give you the glory and the honor. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.